AFC Tottenham frustrated. High scoring City take on New Milton Town. And could the Bison end their losing run? Hello and welcome to Sports Week. I'm Sam Ashton. In football, AFC Tottenham are in action on Saturday, looking to end a run of three games without a win. Having only 12 games left, Tottenham were looking for a win to ensure a good end to the season. Lee Jarvis was at the Testwood. Without a win in the last three league games, AFC Tottenham hosted Throne Town on Saturday, looking to keep the pressure on Brackley Town in top spot. And in an uneventful first half, it was Throne who took the lead. Matt Smith's volley was well saved by Tottenham keeper James Bittner, but Luke Ballinger reacted sharply to head home and put Frome 1-0 up. Tottenham almost equalised, but Mike Gosney's free kick was tipped on the post. Gosney tried again, this time narrowly missing the right-hand post. The second half presented more chances, and Nathaniel Sherborne was unlucky not to score with this skillful effort. And with 15 minutes to go, Totten finally equalised. Nathan Jack's precise shot finding the bottom corner and giving Totten hope of finding a winner. But only a few minutes later, Totten were almost behind again when Matt Smith found himself in space but failed to find the target. Tension and frustration was growing as Totten tried to find the winner. The woodwork denies Stephen Brown on this occasion. The frustrated Gosney had one final chance to win all three points for his side, but couldn't find the target late on. Minton had to settle for a point. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. It's been three or four games now, you know, uh, especially here. I mean, teams have, have come here twice now in a, in a week and set up and try to you know, make it hard for us. And uh, we have to deal with that. I thought we had, we had good, good areas of pitch today, wide areas. We had a chance to get good ball in and we didn't do that. And uh, that's the disappointing part. Winchester City had scored over 100 goals going into their match on Saturday with New Milton Town. The Citizens have won their last 11 games in all competitions and were looking to extend their lead at the top of the Wessex League. Aaron Summers reports. Winchester City face New Milton Town at the Denplan City ground on Saturday, hoping to maintain their gap of nine points at the top of the Wessex Premier League. Manager Guy Butters stressed the importance of attacking early on and were given the opportunity to take the lead when New Milton Town's captain Darren Curtis was a judge to have pushed Andrew White. Jamie White made no mistake from 12 yards, but the referee's decision clearly angered the away bench. The lead did not last long. Good play from Harrison Jilks and the slack Winchester defending allowed the redeemed Curtis to head in the equaliser. The goal clearly delighted the defender, running half the length of the pitch bearing the name of his newborn daughter on his vest. Butters was bemused by the quick equaliser. With minds drawn to rivals Bermonton in their game, Winchester pushed for another goal early on in the second half. McClory Cuthbertson's cross gave Dominic Allen the chance to score his first goal of the game. City were then given a second penalty when the referee deemed the ball had hit a defender's hand. Jamie White clinically hit the roof of the net. The talisman striker then secured his hat-trick on 70 minutes with his 40th league goal of the season. Mark Lilly came on in the latter stages and 30 seconds later added his name to the score sheet. In the end, Winchester recorded a resounding 5-1 victory and maintained their lead at the top. And with only 10 games to go, they only need six more wins to secure promotion. Baby girl, she's gorgeous, just like her mother. We called her Frankie and I scored a header for her today with that come off my eyebrow. But it was nice to score a header. Well, then we got smashed. <laughs> this is Aaron Summers for Winchester News Online. Eastleigh were up against Farnborough Town at the weekend. The visitors were recently deducted five points for financial irregularities and were in need of a win. Dale Gornall saw the action. Eastleigh's home form has been prolific this season and after a less than uneventful first half, they looked to break the deadlock with Andy Forbes firing just over the bar. The turning point came just before the hour mark when Mitchell Nelson was on the wrong end of an innocuous decision from the referee to award Farnborough a penalty. 
Philip Page stepping up to give the away side the advantage. Eastley hadn't lost at home since September, and with Farnborough manager Spencer Day sensing an upset, he rallied his players for an Eastley onslaught. But it was Farnborough who could have doubled their lead, Page this time seeing his effort fly comfortably over the bar. With time ticking on, Eastley began to pile on the pressure, with McMahon trying his luck from range. And then a fortunate block stopping this goal-bound effort from Michael Green. From the resulting corner, Tom Jordan then saw his header cleared off the line. It wasn't to be for Eastley, Farnborough ending their unbeaten home record. Dale Gornall, Winchester News Online. Now let's look at the updated tables with Henry. Thank you, Sam. In the Wessex League, Winchester remained top and are now nine points ahead of Burmton Heath Harlequins in second place. Winchester also have a game in hand and could extend their lead over second place to 12 points. Winchester have now scored 116 goals in the league this season and have a goal difference of plus 84. In the Evo Stick South League Premier Division, AFC Totter remain in second place, five points behind top spot Brackley Town. The Stags have played a game less, but they'll be looking nervously behind them as Cambridge City are only a point behind. AFC Totten have a goal difference of plus 30. And finally in the Blue Square South, Basingstoke Town's win leaves them in seventh position, 12 points off the playoffs with 12 games to go. Basingstoke has scored 48 goals this season. Eastleigh have played two more games than Basingstoke and currently find themselves in ninth position, but on the same number of points as Basingstoke. These tables are all correct before Tuesday night matches. Back to you, Sam. Cheers, Henry. In ice hockey, the Basingstoke Bison had lost their last two games and the playoffs were beginning to look unlikely. But a win over the Slough Jets could reignite that hope. Henry Lewin Tip was at the Planet Ice Arena. The Basingstoke Bison were in good spirits before they played the Slough Jets, with several players returning to the roster. The Bison stretched out an early two goal lead, the second a solo effort from Chris Wiggins. The Jets halved the lead with Aaron Connolly's goal. The Jets then drew level, thanks to a well-placed shot from Shepard. Man of the match for the Jets, Aaron Connolly, then gave them the lead. Captain Nicky Chin equalised for the Bison, putting his team back in the game. Poor clearance let Dave Cloutman far home his shot. The Jets then extended the league when Connolly completed his hat-trick. Davies fired home at close range to extend the Jets' lead. Things balled over on the ice when Chris Wiggins pummeled a slough player up against the glass. The game was rounded out by Daniel Puskalkas, who scored two final goals to end the game 3-8. His five-goal defeat has rounded off a bad spell for the Bison, who have now lost three games in a row. Henry Lewintip, Winchester News Online. And finally, former Olympic skater and current Dancing on Ice judge Robin Cousins was in Winchester last week. Sports Week went to speak to him about his involvement in the London 2012 Olympics. What the ambassadors are, we are, we have all Olympic medalists, a lot of gold medalists, who have been there and done that, been through the Olympic process. I've been through two Olympics as a competitor, uh, 76 in Innsbruck, 1980 Lake Placid, which is where I won my gold. Um, so it's just trying to get the athletes and the coaches and their families to be able to appreciate and understand what it's going to be like because there is no textbook, there's nothing that tells you what an Olympic Games is going to feel like. Robin also told Sports Week about how he felt when he won his gold medal at the 1980 Winter Olympics. It's, it's an amazing feeling, I can't um, really explain how it feels, it's something you have to, to experience. Um, and I'm not trying to sound cocky with all of that, but it's, you do your job every day, you train, you do, and as I say, it is just the day job, but something happens. I had no idea that six million people were up at three o'clock in the morning watching me live. I didn't even know that it was even being shared. That didn't cross my mind. And then to come back and have the adulation that goes with that type of thing. And, and there is nothing, as I said, nothing trying to explain to the girls. Nothing like being able to stand there on the podium having done your thing. And for me, the important part was then standing, having the medal around and seeing my family and my coach and the team leader and the people who, without whom, 
this would never have been possible. That's all from Sports Week. For more news and sport, go to winall.co.uk. Thank you and goodbye.